On the track is a web TV show about cryptozoology, natural history, green issues, and whatever else the team feel like making up as they go along. Enjoy. So what's in today's show, Mr. John? Well, Hannes, you'll remember a few weeks ago we had a two-part interview with a young man called Daniel Barnett, who started his own Fortune Zoological Research team deep in rural Somerset. Well, he has had some preliminary results from his first batch of eDNA test kits. <laughs> really like the old credits. Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, my name's John Downs and I'm the director of... Hang on... What are you doing here, Orange Cat? Good afternoon, and the very my name is Peanut, better known as Captain Phenobilax the Magnificent the Third, and I am the most important cat here at the Centre for Party and Zoology. And every Wednesday evening at 6.30 and every Saturday afternoon at 3, me and Father bring you a miscellany of hard science, weird shit and surreality. Do you want to know what surreality is? No, you don't. So, Daniel... Congratulations on the weekend. You did a very, very good job. But now, I've known about some of this for a couple of weeks, but I promised you that I would keep quiet about it, and I always keep my promises. So, first of all, tell me about what happened when you got the results back on the eDNA. First of all, where, where did you take the eDNA from? So we took the eDNA from uh, the 18 inch footprint and the cast um, that we got from um, from that footprint. Wow. And what did the results say? I'm reliving this for a hundredth time and, uh, and every time it just blows my mind every time like it's new um so i'll start with the common kind of animals so you got pigeon uh, chicken for some weird reason um pheasant deer um badgers squirrels squirrels so so your normal woodland animals mm -hmm. then uh which is quite amazing is we have wild boar uh, which have been um, up there um, but it's, it's, it's still amazing and then the just one where I go I give up <laughs> um, is old world monkeys and great apes now every researcher that I've contacted has no clue absolutely no clue and it's not like this was just um hits on the footprint we found other indentations were, that were about 15 minutes away and we took edna from them and uh, there was there was hits in there as well so it's not only that that footprint I truly have no words. I don't know what to say. That is the most extraordinary thing that I have ever 
heard in my whole career as a cryptozoologist. And I've seen and done some extraordinary things, but my God. Have you got any <laughs> possible explanation that doesn't involve it being a great, a great ape or a new old world monkey? Um, <laughs> great apes, I could come up with a small one where humans can carry, carry around um, small traces of great apes, um, but the fact that we've got actual human hits on here as well would kind of make me feel that if the great apes and humans would have been combined, which makes me go, hold on a minute, no, this isn't. I, John, I honestly don't, and I'm the same with every researcher, and I've said this on probably eight different podcasts now, and every time I've known this for about eight weeks, or, or something like that, and it still shocks me. Every time I read it, every time I go back over it, it shocks me every time. And and it's just reading it, I go, it's just mad. It's just mad. What are you doing next? What's the next thing? So... The next step after uh, uh, after this, I'm hoping to track where this creature has gone. Now, we have found another footprint in about five minutes up the road um, where we have taken a hair sample out of it and possibly it could potentially have something in there. Um, apart from that, there's been no other traces. I can say, um, one of our guests, Vera Cardoso from the event, went to Dead Woman's Ditch yesterday, which is in the Quantock Hills, and actually experienced some Bigfoot activity. Um, she heard a wood knock, and she found a tree structure, which could potentially mean that whatever it is is still here if 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 what she said was right then whatever it is is still on these these hills and my plan is is i've managed to get hold of a drone and it means that now i'm gonna litter the forest in trail cameras litter the forest in apples and all all, all, all different kinds of um, stuff that might lure someone in and then have eyes above and uh, and get a drone up in the air and have some boots on the ground and try and absolutely s scatter the forest in in as much power as we can. So that's well, I've, been, that. I've been talking to Guinevere and we're going to start trying to raise some more money to get some more trail cams that you can put out you can put out in that forest. Because we'll be able to use them for other things after. Oh that'll be amazing, mate. Mm. Goodness gracious. So where was when did you get this latest footprint? So there's uh Latest footprint, I would have said probably about two weeks ago. I would say. Oh, I was um, wondering if it's and, when you and this up. footprint was the. Mm. Mm, it it was it was about two weeks ago. It was yeah. I didn't know if you had any results when you went up there with your colleague Darren the other day when you went up either before or after the oh uh, yeah day. oh yeah yeah well that's uh that's a new investigation that i'm now trying to 
So, unfortunately, I have spoken to the eDNA company, and they are unable to do anything else due to their new um, new roles now because they've got some new new kit and and really deep in science and and stuff in so they're unable to do another e edna so i'm gonna have to try and find anyone else who would be willing just to be on hand now me darren angela and um jill we all went to the forest and there was a patch of forest in that forest that we had no idea what was in there because during the summer it was just so thick with vegetation and when we got there again i kind of got very very fed up and i got fed up i went right i'm going in and i darted straight in got over the logs got over the, the got over the vegetation and we got into that forest when we got probably about 500 meters in angela turned to me and went it's dead silent. Absolutely dead silent. Not a word. Not a bird. Not a squirrel. Nothing. Now this forest is really, really enclosed. And it's like trees really, really close together. Now it reminded me of somewhere where you could hide. Now I'm going to try. And I'm going to try and get the drone above it to see because we didn't go through the whole thing now inside we angela went left i went forward uh jill went that way darren stayed out because he couldn't he couldn't get in because of his back and he stayed with the dog so me and their kids went straight and we all kind of split off. Within a minute, Angela whispered to all of us that it got really, really cold in one area. And when she looked around, there was about 13 to 40 different bones in one area. Now... Oh, <laughs> I don't know what to think of that. The first thing that went through my brain is, is this human? Now, I don't think it's human, and I very highly doubt it is. It looks like deer. Now, I have messaged and emailed an archaeology department to see if they can have a look at these bones because number one I, I don't know what they've come off of they're very very large bones probably h half the size of my foot and I'm size five so they're, they're quite large bones now we collected three and they're now in Nan's garage um, which is lovely for her <laughs> um, and yeah, so she, we, we all went, it's just weird. Now, whether they could, the two main questions that I want to answer is what they came off of and what killed them, or did it die? If something was killed, nothing in that forest, nothing in the UK would kill something like that. Honestly, one, now these were these weren't like fresh bones. There is one species that would kill. Us. Yeah. Go on. Humans. Yeah, that's true. Humans are the only species that would. Yeah. Kill. But that's the thing which I hope you are. I think you ought to collect all the bones. Richard and I have looked at the photos, and we believe that they're deer. But you need to look at every single bone mm. to see if there are tooth marks and even more so if there are cut marks. Because the only species in the world that uses the knife to cut up and dismember 
its prey are humans. And that will be the best way to mm. find out if it's been killed by a person. My other suggestion would be because you say it, the bones are really quite big and the part of the forest where you're in was very, very thick. Could it be that some could it be that a large deer got in there, got stuck and just either broke its neck running through the um forest and getting its head stuck on um stuck in branches or just died of starvation or of another disease because animals always most animals do retreat into mm. the quietest place they can to die so i think you really i will to... agree with you on that john yeah. you need to look at every mm. I, I, I will find no, um, complete detail. And only thing that strikes to me now, I haven't said this to anyone yet. We did find a footprint that day, and the only people that know this is me, Jill. Angelo and the kids. So not even Darren knows this yet. And, and the three hundred people were... We found a footprint in the mud. <laughs> um Yeah, and I uh, as I'm saying now, I'm sp I'm even speechless saying it and we took eDNA from that footprint and I still I still have it. Now whether that would lead to anything um striking, I don't know. Um but I gotta say it's just a weird place where number one, we didn't feel like we belonged in that place. And it's very, very different to the rest of the forest. Now, I want it to be a deer that just died, and but the weird thing about this is it looked like a pack, a massive pack. Now, whether on your theory, if it's a disease, yeah, um, but there were several bones leading to this point. So every now and then, we'll just point out and go, "There's, there's two bones. There's more two bones." There's three bones. So it was like a trail. Were there any skulls? No. None. Because that's one thing which would indicate possible human involvement. Because people who kill deer either for sport or for food quite often take the skull away as a trophy mm, that's true um the other thing that does strike to me now humans collect skin for now where is obviously it's illegal to do it here um, now, well, people still do it, and they do. Um, the only thing that strikes me is there's no evidence of, like, skin around. So, it's only, I'm, and I'm not talking legs either, I'm only talking rib cages and joints. So, there was no legs around, and there were was no skulls. Now I agree with 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 that they take skulls to put on the wall and, and and blah 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 but it something something just goes strikes in me and go hold on a minute is there something not right here? Is there is there something that isn't um or shouldn't be there? If you know, if you know what I mean, I know exactly what you mean. Mm. This is absolutely intriguing. 
absolutely fascinating and in part quite scary. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Lord Daniel, you don't know how proud of you I am, mate. I hope this doesn't sound patronising. <laughs> You're fantastic. <laughs> and you have got no. results no, so far that everybody that I know in the, the, the Bigfoot field would kill for results like this. <laughs> what, when you say they won't do your DNA anymore, is that they won't give them to you for nothing anymore? Or they can't do much. No, they said even if they can't, they can't do them at all. Oh, that's a bummer. Okay, what you're going to have to do mm. is chase around and find somebody. If they won't do them for nothing, let me know how much they cost, and we're going to have to try and raise some money from somewhere for this. Yeah, I think a lot of people now said we need a second opinion now. We need we need a second one one of these um for for the for the DNA investigation. Um because oh, totally. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. It will just be where 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 we get the money. Do you have any idea how much it does cost? I unfortunately, mate, don't. Now, I am hoping to kind of find out how much. I have had a guy offer, but he said it's like £100 for one test kit. I'm like, okay. Um, so it would just be, I, I do have some money for but it's just kind of finding the right way of doing it and what I also want to make sure is kind of I'm I'm kind of using it right because if if I have a doubt that this eDNA isn't going to be perfect then I won't do it um it will I'm gonna the bones could actually turn into something. We could have something on our hands here now, which is why I've emailed the uh, the archaeology department to see if they're willing to start an investigation with us to see if we can try and number one find out what what happened and number two what it came off of. Yeah, I'm pretty certain. I'm pretty certain if you did that the bones are dear. But the important thing is, how did they die? Yeah. What ate them? Mm, yeah. Yeah, and and what what they would be able to do, hoping that um, they will be able to determine by a straight look at them of kind of number one how old they are and number two why why they died and why now obviously being careful of giving the location out but I reckon this could turn into something quite big with the bones now no one has ever ever recovered any bones of cryptid before and I'm not saying this is I'm only saying that the bones that I that I have in in Jill's kitchen I have never seen a bone like that before now I don't know if you've seen the bones that we've got um but no, they I are so. about that them. and they're round Oh, can you send can you send me pictures? Because now I haven't seen those. Yeah. Would oh. it? Yeah. This is so exciting, man. Just remember that hopefully a lot of <laughs> people will buy your book when it comes out. And 
that is money that can go through oh, yeah. DNA, uh, eDNA and other equipment. And I will have a word with Gwyn and get a... What I think we're probably going to do is set up a specific uh, GoFundMe or whatever um, page for you. For mm. the, um, oh, that'll be amazing. For your research. One thing, I believe that you're not allowed to do them if you're under 18. But nobody's going to accuse me of being under 18. Mm. So. Guinevere and I'll do them and set it up to try and make some. Are you sure? Speaking of little rat bad. The only reason I want to do it, I the only reason I want to do <laughs> it is to find a nine foot tall great ape who's going to come round and box your ears for being such a cheeky little sh bag. Oh dear, I just. <laughs> I'm going to go, Mr. YouTube, I'm going to put a beep over that i am so so grateful that you're allowing us to be part of this because i find this totally and utterly enthralling you're very welcome mate you're 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 very very welcome and the goal the absolute goal that i said to, to do when we first set off was if this investigation turns out and we find something we are going to need as much help as possible and you you your help has been just incredible mate so so yeah you can take credit for some of this as well if you want to support us and help us make more content like these please press like Subscribe, follow our Facebook page, and check out our Patreon. And there's the ghost of Joe Strummer, who's an ever more regular visitor to my little house, will tell you. Don't forget to ring the notification bell, otherwise you won't be told when the next episode's gonna be. And that would be an awful pity, wouldn't it? Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. We're at the end of another episode. I'd like to say a big thank you to everybody, but for whom this episode wouldn't have happened. Particularly my guest, Daniel Bellanet, my producer, Louis, and I'm not going to make any more jokes about Louis gallivanting around the colonies because he's back and he's doing all sorts of exciting things now. But I want to say a big thank you to everything that he's done. I want to say a big thank you to Richard and Karen Heath for driving me all the way to Burnham-on-Sea last weekend. In fact, about three weekends ago by the time you see this in order to go to Daniel's one day conference which was a fantastic affair and I enjoyed very much. I'm going to be back next Saturday and we're going to be showing you my talk from Daniel's conference and I hope you enjoy it as much as I enjoyed being there. So I've already said I'll be back on Wednesday with something interesting for you. I don't know what yet, but I think it'll probably be some more stuff from the butterfly conservation people. And then next Saturday with my talk from Daniel's one day Bigfoot conference in Burnham on Sea. Thank you very much for all watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And are you listening, Mr. McCrennan? Because I've already said I'm going to be here and I'll be here doing the live chat and all the other stuff that I do. If you're there watching me then, Mr. McKinnon, what am I going to be doing, Mr. McKinnon? Um...